نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے یہ جو راستے ہیں جدا جدا یہ معاملہ کوئی اور ہے اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام خاتم النبین وبعد السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو اینادر سیریز دیٹ وی آر گون اسٹارٹنگ آن بلڈنگ بریجز بٹوین دا فیٹس وی جسٹ فنش دا آئی تھنک اٹ واز اے فور پارٹ سیریز آن اسلام آفرز سولوشنز ٹو دا ماڈرن ورلڈ And now we're going to go on to a two-part, it may take us three parts, let's see how it goes, but at least a two-part episode, a series uh, of a very topical, uh, controversial uh, and uh, emotional uh, topic, uh, which I will keep you in suspense for another minute or two. But let's welcome our listeners and our viewers from uh, all over, uh, you know, ITV uh, stations, Uh, growing networks and growing uh, viewership out there. Uh, we welcome you to this program which uh, brings about understanding uh, between the faiths, building bridges of understanding. And it's based on this Quranic model that you see in front of you uh, that uh, we are all the children of Adam, the tree of humanity, which is a fundamental uh, Islamic belief. Uh, Adam and Eve at the bottom of the tree, peace be upon him, and then the nations and tribes. Uh, all over the world and then Abrahamic branch in particular we're just talking to highlight it and therefore we say Jews, Christians and Muslims who are of the Abrahamic faith they are the Abrahamic family and then because of that Islam says that humanity is one family so this is the, 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 the focus this is the way we look at it doesn't matter what religion what culture what language what nationality we are we are the family of the human race And uh, we need to understand it, though, right? And uh, the whole uh, idea of this program is, uh, even though I may not accept another viewpoint, but let me listen to it, let me respect it, uh, and agree to disagree. Uh, we are not here to be judgmental or scoring points. We're just sharing ideas and sharing views and getting to understand one another. Also, Islam has, as it's one of its fundamental principles, uh, ISLAM says, I shall love all mankind. So here's the topic I said I'm going to tell you about. Uh, faith healing or fake healing. Now I'm sure some of you there will be smiling and say, well, that is, yes, that is uh, been going around, doing its rounds with the last the resurrection story uh, that uh, came about. And uh, well, that's just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? There's been prior to that, it's, it, this kind of uh, fake healing and faith healing uh, comes and goes, you know, ever so now and then in the media, you know, spraying with dye roaches and all kinds of funny things uh, people are made to do. So uh, in the name of faith healing. So I think, uh, uh, again, I want to say right at the outset, we're not picking on any particular religion or any particular group. And we're not saying there's no such thing as faith healing. And we're not saying all of them are fake healing. What we are saying there that uh, you have to take each one individually, each case individually. But uh, as this, because this program is uh, one of building bridges and understanding other faiths, and this faith healing is very, uh, very aggressively marketed and promoted in the Christian world as certain sectors of Christian denominations, not all of them. So, uh, because we have faith healers that are Muslim faith healers, we have uh, the African traditionalist faith healers or Sangomas, Hindu faith healers. So, I mean, it's there all over and uh, there is such a thing, we're not denying it. Uh, what, when does it become fake healing? It becomes fake healing when it is not done for healing anymore, but it is done for money and it is not done genuinely, but things are staged and set up and getting the masses and praying on the masses. As the program unfolds, uh, you will come to know what we are saying, you know, what we're talking about here. 
And uh, you know, even in medicine, like maybe let me just uh, not exclude that. Even modern medicine could be fake healing, right, today. You can put it in the category of fake healing because there are a lot of uh, medical people out there in the name of modern scientific medicines and what have you, treatment. They are more interested in a patient's wealth than in a patient's health. How many times you heard the story, this doctor keeps making you come back to them or that therapist keeps making you come back to them because they're more and more, are you on medical aid? Have you got gap cover? Oh yeah, so that's good. So, you know, it's all about the money. So the focus is on the money uh, and not on the healing and the patient. And so therefore this, this line start to get blurred. Is it really, are they, you know, uh, healing us or are they killing us with the bills? So I think uh, we need to look at this whole thing, but holistically, not every doctor is like that, not every medical practice or health therapist is like that. So I want to make it clear, at the beginning, we're not, uh, we're not saying it is all like that, it's not all good, it's all not bad. Well, we are living in a world with a mixture of everything. Not all Muslims are bad, not all Jews are bad, not all Christians are bad, not all Indians are bad, not all Europeans are bad, not all Africans, it's a mixture of all, every group, have the good and the bad, every religious faith has the good and the bad, every you know, healing group has the good guys and the bad guys. And I think this is, so let's, at the beginning, let's, let's start with these preliminary remarks and not be uh, the word we use, uh, don't generalize, and don't paint everybody with the same brush, okay? So uh, that is the, the whole thing. But what we want to know is what is this origin of faith healing? You know, where does this thing, I'm now I'm looking only from the Christian perspective now, uh, you know, in particular because it is the biggest global uh, media hyped thriving industry or church, you want to call it. Uh, faith healing is the principal focus of the word faith movement. Now, it's, I didn't make a mistake, it's not world, word, W-O-R-D, and we'll come to explain that it is the focus of the word faith movement when it started by Phineas Quimby in the 1802 to 1866. So this Phineas Quimby was the first person, you know, in the 19th century, at the end of the 19th century, long ago, uh, where he came with this idea of faith healing and focusing on the word faith. Developed a method of natural healing. He developed a method of natural healing, which involved techniques of hypnotism and magnetism. So hypnotism and magnetism. And we'll talk about this also later on as we go along. Let's finish the slide. And the last, I want you to focus on the last sentence. And he emphasized the role of the human mind in achieving bodily health. He emphasized the role of the human mind in achieving the bodily health. Now, this isn't that interesting. He, he, he found it out. Phineas Quimbley was a sharp man. He, he realized that the mind, how we think and what, how we use this mind uh, can actually determine our health or ill health. Now, the, the, the fact that the mind affects the, the health and the body is a term which he, he used the term at that time, you know, in the 19th century, uh, turn of early, uh, just before uh, the end of the 19th century. But the modern science has given a word and medical term, it's called psychosomatic. See that big word, it's called psychosomatic. He called, this is now used, it's, it's an established medical terminology. And there's the definition, uh, one of the rough definitions, a physical illness or other condition caused or aggravated by a mental factor such as internal conflict, stress, what, 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 what. So, so the words in red, it's a physical illness, an ailment, a disease, caused or ever aggravated by a mental factor. In other words, the, by the mind. This illness is either caused, a physical illness is caused by the mind, by how we think or how we exercise the mind, or it can even aggravate it. Like, I, I'll give you some examples of this, which is in modern medicine, you know, if, is, uh, if somebody uh, has got ulcers, say, you know, gastric ulcers. So one of the causes could be diet, right? People eating a lot of chilies and strong kind of stuff to the acidic stuff, it can lead to that. But another established factor is the mind. People who are always worrying 
and people who are always stressed out and because of the mind that is in stress and worry, uh, the, the body starts to secrete more gastric juices and acids and which leads to ulcers. So you, here you find an example of where the mind, it's a mental condition, stress, but it is causing a physical ailment. You see, so lot like that, lots of, there are lots of illnesses that are called psychosomatic illnesses. So why are we saying this under fake news uh, of, of fake news of faith uh, healing? Sorry, we'll come to the news, faith healing or fake healing. How is this linked? This, this, you remember we went back to Phineas, what he said, Phineas Kumbi said that it is the mind, it is the mind and how we use this mind that can affect the health and the body and disease. And he realized that. So the opposite of what you're seeing on your slide there, a physical illness, you know, that is caused. So if, if the wrong use of the mind, wrong way it is used or, you know, uh, wrongly used, uh, it can cause physical illnesses. So the mind can also heal itself if you do the reverse process, which what he found by using hypnosis, what he called now this, this alternative treatment, which he spoke about this healing, faith, he, he called it word. If you go back to what he said, word faith. You see the second line there? Faith healing is the principal focus of the word faith movement. He's using the word word faith. Now we'll, we'll unpack that later on, why he's using that word, uh, word faith, uh, you know, in, for this here. So, but here, so what he found out, that so even if, if, if the wrong kind of thinking and stress can cause illnesses, then if you train your mind to, 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 do, to calm down or to use it in the proper way, then it can heal. So again, so hypnotism can heal. By hypnotizing somebody, you can heal that person because you are now, if, it's, if it is psychosomatic even, you know, largely. So I think oh, you know how we're going with this and it will, we'll unpack it even more as we go along, because although there's individual hypnotism, there's also mass hypnotism takes place. So stay tuned, uh, we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we are carrying on with what is the history. Remember, where did this start from? And we spoke about Phineas Kumbi. Now, Phineas Kumbi, now that was in the 19th century up to 1888. He mentored, Phineas Kumbi mentored or he taught a person by the name of Mary Baker Eddy or Mary Baker Eddy, who founded the Christian Scientist who have over 2,000 churches in over 60 countries. So uh, this uh, Phineas Quimby taught this person, Mary Becker Eddy, how to use hypnotism or the mind and magnetism to do alternate healing and to heal people based on faith as well. And they brought it into the Christian faith and founded the now you hear the word from, it came from a scientific thing, uh, you know, now it is a Christian they put the word Christian scientist now. So you see the way that I'm giving you the history of how they are linking now healing with the science of hypnotism and magnetism and learning how to, to do that. And then Mary Becker Eddy, that's, now this was now the person who brought it, that was now in the 19th century, 18th century, 19th. Now we in the, the person in the 19th century, you know, who brought it now closer to home is the late Kenneth Hagen. Uh, who, considered, who is considered the father of the modern day word faith movement. So he brought it uh, from the 18th century to the 19th century, you know, as we came to the end of last, the last century. And he was then founded this, even perfected it and brought it more home in terms of the church. And from here, you'll find now in the 21st century, we are now in the 21st century. Now it is such a global industry. There are so many, many uh, healing, uh, you know, medical churches uh, on TV, on international satellite dishes, local areas, you name it, you are in touch with them all the time. It is now a, a, a you know, a, a, an explosion of this as we speak. Uh, but this is the origins of it. To the point that now, 
we're going to group all of them in what we call Christian healing churches. Because it had its origin first on a, based on a scientific, but because, uh, you know, Kumbi was a Christian and he brought in from there some Christian uh, ideas into it, right? And then from those Christian ideas, they brought it to with the Christian belief because Jesus, peace be upon him, is well known. If you, if you think of, you know, every prophet had their own unique characteristics or miracles which God uh, did by them. Uh, if Moses, if you talk of Moses, peace be upon him, uh, you'll, 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 you'll hear of or you'll think about uh, the sea, opening of the sea, the miracle which God did by him, or he put the staff, the stick, at the staff, and it became a snake which had the pharaoh's snake. If you talk of the, uh, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you will talk about his standing miracle is the Quran, apart from his other miracles, that it is a living miracle as a book uh, itself. And, uh, and the great revolution and changes he brought uh, in a matter of 23 years. So all these, they had every prophet, but Jesus, peace be upon him, is known is, you know, by most and everyone who knows about him as a miracle healer and the miracles. All prophets perform miracles, by the way, by the permission of God. But the, the, the one that's attributed to Jesus, more peace be upon him, is healing you know, made the blind to see and all that uh, by God's permission. So now you can see why that, that sort of has caught on as one of the key, uh, what may I use the word, that was one of the key jobs or tasks and mission of Jesus, uh, that he was a miracle healer and all those who come after him uh, must be able to do miracle healing. So, so this is how this, uh, in terms of Christianity, and not all Christian, you know, ma many of the, what we call, the Orthodox or the mainline churches, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Presbyterians, the Methodists, they're not into this uh, Christian healing. It's mainly more of those, you know, some Pentecostal and what we would call later on, if they even go to the point of using them as, as cultist groups uh, who, who, who just go only on this and who only concentrate on healing crusades, medical crusades, Jesus heals uh, kind of thing. They've got so many names. Now, uh, the underlying theology, or no matter which healing church it is, you know, by who or what and how big, the underlying theology is generally the same. And what it is, we create our own realities by what we say, by speaking power into our words spoken through faith in God. Now I'm going to read that again because this is, this is very powerful in itself. And I hope you're going to follow what I'm saying because I will explain this uh, later on. We will show the, the, the slides that are coming, what this means now. Now in the words in inverted commas, the last two lines, uh, you know, no, the, the last three lines, we create our own realities by what we say. Now you know why it is called the word, you know, it's called the word faith uh, 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 philosophy. They do it by word. Remember, what did they say? A word faith movement. See on the second line, the origin, of it, that's how it started, by the word. And now you find that they create our own realities by what we say, by the words we speak, the power in our words spoken through faith in God. And this is the fundamental thing about uh, the whole healing thing. Now, I thought maybe at this point, for the benefit of everyone, uh, the, the Muslim viewers will understand what I'm saying, but for the benefit of uh, those who are not Muslim, of the other faiths, you know, this, the, the, to, say, to say something, the word, you know, uh, this is very powerful because even, uh, the, you know, you'll find in Christianity in the beginning was the word, you see, the logos, the word. Uh, we find uh, uh, that even the first the revelation of the Quran was Iqra, you know, say something, words. It was something to the Prophet Prophet had to read or, or repeat some words, right? Uh, so so the, the God himself, uh, you know, uh, God himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that when God wants to do something, God doesn't do how we do things. He's at his divine level, not at the human level. He says, whenever God decrees a matter, he merely says, be, and it is. He uses the word be, kun. In Arabic, kun. So it's a word. The power in the kun, fire kun. Be, and it becomes. So let's say, so what I'm trying to get at, but, that, but, but that's the word said by God. The power of the word of God that can create something out of nothing. 
So let's assume uh, I wanted a tree here, and I, how am I going to just get a tree? If I can start planting, plus it's in the studio, I've got to open it up, get to the ground, and it's going to take years. But if God wants to create a tree, he just says, kun, fire kun, and the tree will be here. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, this idea is taken from this, all of you know, creation, or that God's power to create. And they say, but by you want to heal, you use certain words. And the power of those words through faith in God will have a healing effect. So you see the basis for all of this here. Now, we're not denying that there's power of words in faith. And there's power of words in, in God's revelation, in the, in the Holy Scriptures. So we're not denying that as well. Uh, so that is there and if, you know, it is used properly in the right context, in the right ways. Uh, it is there. Where all this becomes a problem is uh, when, when the money comes into it. That now it's not, uh, you know, when Jesus, peace be upon him, was healing, he didn't have a big collection box and say, hey, come on, hello, you know, just fill my, fill my hat here, fill my, fill my bag up. He wasn't going around doing it to collect money as a money-making uh, you know, thing. It was a gift given by God, and God gives the gifts free. How much you pay, you're going to pay God for his gift. So, so the problem comes in um, where this has become out of hand now, so to say, is we are not denying. So I, I hope we are getting ourselves, as we're going still forward, we are not denying the concept of faith and healing and God and spiritual healing and all that. We're not denying it. I think uh, it is there. there are of, obviously, there are, there are others who don't believe in that at all. They don't believe in it at all. But for those who have faith, whatever faith we may be, uh, but the problem comes in is when it is abused, and in that name and in this way, uh, people are made to give money, and then you know what I'm getting at, where it goes out of hand. And that's what we're going to unpack uh, in this program. But now, to, when I say that it is in the words that we, we say. They are saying it's the words that you utter. Now, I'm going to, you know, surprise some of the viewers. I'm going to just quote about two or three of the words. Now, what they, because remember when we were talking earlier about the mind, uh, you know, the power of the mind. Now, there's another saying, what the mind of man or the, what the human mind can conceive, it can achieve. What the human mind can conceive, it can achieve. The mind is very powerful. That's how hypnosis comes into play. Uh, and self-hypnosis, you know, uh, there are people, it's used, it's used even in a good way. Some, there are many hypno, hypnotherapists who can make you give up cigarette smoking through hypnotism and auto-suggestion. They use your mind by repeating the certain words or getting into your subconscious mind. So that power is there. But now, when, when it's coming to, to, to auto-suggestion, I just want to say this, explain something before we go to, the, to, the, to the, some of the sayings of these this very big uh, international faith healers. Uh, you know, when you keep repeating something, if you say something once, your mind registered it. Obviously, the mind is ever, especially the subconscious mind, is ever alert. It never sleeps. But if you keep repeating the same thing, so you are putting a certain force into your mind or a sense of emphasis and then it starts to build up a certain potential in the mind and energy in the mind. All right, when you keep repeating, that's the power of repetition. But now uh, so it can be used in a good way and in a bad way. Now, if we look at this, what the, by using the word where they say in the name of the Holy Spirit or what, 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 and you're using words now uh, to create an efficient. Now, it, you remember we said psychosomatic, where the mind can uh, use the mind and the spoken word to heal. You find that people, uh, you know, in media, if you speak, we talk about fake news and lies in the media. Now, I want to talk about how that is linked to fake and faith healing. So just stay tuned. Uh, we'll go for a quick ad break and we'll come and link the two up. <laughs> Uh, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So now, what, uh, how we, what we attack, we get into now, why are we talking about fake news? How is fake news related to fake healing? So now, 
you see, to, they say if a lie, a lie is repeated often enough to the masses, especially from people of authority, it gets accepted as the truth. You got it? If a lie, this is a principle, by the way, Hitler even believed in this principle. And these are people in public, uh, you know, leaders and people controlling the media, they know it's called mind control. So if a lie is speak, spoken often enough by people in authority, it will be accepted by the masses as the truth. So we know that. You remember at one stage, and so that's how the media works, you know. People just see the headlines, the masses, you know, the 85%. Uh, oh, suicide bomber did this, this, this. Oh, yeah, hey, these Muslims, they are suicide bombers. They just saw the headline, whether it was a suicide bomber, or whether it was a planned remote control bomb, who they don't know who it was. The masses just read the headlines and they accept it as the truth. They're so conditioned now. That's from the masses side. So the, likewise, how is this linked to a faith healing? When, when these faith healers, you know, when they keep repeating these words, the, the, you will be healed and, and the Lord will heal. And then these words, repetition, it, it, they start to believe this, right? Uh, and, and then there's power in what they believe. It starts to have an effect on the mind. And then if the mind it can, it, it builds up that energy, then the mind has a psychosomatic effect on the body. But I want now to take, so you, you understand, that's how the mass hysteria thing, or mass uh, uh, hypnotism and, and, and mass uh, media works in mind control. But what about the person saying it? What about the person in authority who is keep repeating? Every news place he goes, he's got to repeat it. Uh, now imagine, he knows it's a lie. Or he, he hasn't verified it. But he's with this new broadcasting news, yes, 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 9-11, Osama did it. Uh, next, CNN, yes, 9-11, Osama did it. And, uh, and then every news media is going, he doesn't know who's Osama, he never verified it, somebody wrote the script and he had to keep reading because he's in the system. He ends up believing that himself. The person who's in that position starts to believe that lie himself as the truth. So these fake healers or faith healers when they are saying all these words, they start to believe it themselves. You, that's where I'm getting to now. You understand? So that's the point I'm driving to. That uh, you, you, Sometimes you mustn't think that they are conning the people. They have repeated this so much and, and dreamt and slept this and so many times that they are believing they are that what they are saying. Now, I'm not saying this. Now, it's a very deep research I did and I'm looking at it very clinically. Let me, let me shock you with some... Some, what, what some of these fa fake or faith healers who are well known, what they have said. Now, Kenneth Copeland, we'll talk about him just now. In, 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 right, in one audio tape in 1987, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, what he said, you don't have a God in you. You don't have a God in you. You are one. See that now? You don't have a God in you. The Muslims believe God is, you know, uh, closer to everyone's jugular vein. But he says, you don't have a God in you. You are one. Kenneth Copeland, the force of love, audio tape, uh, you know, Kenneth Copeland Ministries in 1987. So you can see if he's talking this, if he's preaching this, the power in the words, then with faith, you start believing. So you know what this is saying? You, you don't have a God in you. You are a God yourself. You start believing that. So, and the power with, with keep repeating it and repeating it and the masses repeating it, it all gets accepted as the truth. And you know, hypnotism is also by repetition can cause that. So, so I think you know what we, where we're going with how to, we are unpacking uh, this, uh, this healing thing. Let's take you, give you another shocking one. The same Kenneth Copeland in Believer's Voice of Victory, it was broadcast on TBN now. This is on a television set, you know, one of those is, uh, international satellite dishes, recorded on July 9, 1987. Listen to what he says. I say this with all respect so that it does not upset you too bad, but I say it anyway. When I read the Bible where Jesus says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Look at this now. Look at how uh, these, these, these healing guys these, uh, you know, medical healers, right? How they, they now, 
by keep talking and repeating, now they are believing. They are not normal thinking Jesus is saying, they say, no, I am God also now. You know, Jesus, well, although Jesus did not say I am God in this statement, when Jesus said I am, he was referring to, uh, you know, uh, the burning bush as one of the incidences when Moses, peace be upon him, was called. Uh, and God told him, remove thy shoes for wherein thy put thy foot is holy ground. Remember the incident? And then Moses, peace be upon him, asked God, if I go to the, my, who must I tell him who is speaking? So God said, I am who I am. I am. That was God speaking to Moses. Jesus didn't say, I am God. That's another topic. But I'm just showing, trying to give you, I'm quoting you Kenneth Copeland, one of these uh, evangelical, uh, you know, faith uh, healers, you know, on a big scale. And he says, uh, when, when the Bible says, uh, and he reads that Jesus says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. So now it's going to get even more hectic now for the, with the next quotation. So this thing all builds up in, in a person's mind and psyche. And then this is Benny Hinn. And I think everybody knows Benny Hinn. You know, on praise a program, on the TBN, also the television broadcasting, very famous broadcast, November 6, 1990. He says, I am a little messiah walking on earth. I am a little messiah walking on earth. So somebody can say from somebody's perspective, it's nothing wrong with that, you know. Jesus is the big messiah and I'm the small messiah. Uh, but a, a messiah at it. He says, so long as if I'm a small messiah, too, I'm a messiah. So who was Jesus the messiah? Remember I said earlier on uh, in, the, in the last uh, segment, what I said, what, what we remember Jesus, peace be upon him for, of all his qualities, one of it is he's the messiah. But everybody remembers Jesus for his miracle healing. So the messiah was a miracle healer. So if I am a little messiah, I'm a little miracle healer also, you see. So you see how this thing all fits in. And a person starts to believe this, and a person starts to preach this, and believes it himself, and the masses start believing it. So it is a really a mind thing as well. It is a faith thing as well. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, it, that is how this thing gets all intertwined up, you know. And, and we'll talk later on about, uh, you know, uh, more of this, uh, as to why people still keep going there, but because that's another topic. But for now, we can understand uh, wh why there's this power in this world. And you'll find these people who are the, these healers, you'll notice they command when they speak. They're not so soft-spoken. In the name of the Holy, they, you'll find them, you know, very forceful and, and really commanding the words, you know, and bring force on certain words. This is the, the whole impact it's having on the mind of the person who they're trying to heal on them and on the masses that are watching. And it's, this is the power of the word. So, so, you know, in Islam, for instance, in Islam, you know, I can't even say I'm a small prophet. A prophet is a prophet. I leave alone a messiah. Jesus is the messiah. Muslims believe Jesus, peace be upon him, is the messiah without a doubt. But even a prophet, you know, today, unfortunately, the word uh, in different circles from the Muslim perspective, you know, everybody uh, who reaches a certain understanding or has a certain thinking calls themselves prophets. But in Islam, prophets are ordained by God. Uh, only God ordains who are prophets. And the prophethood has ended, you know, from the string of prophets from Adam and, and Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus and all the 124,000 prophets to the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And thereafter, all those who come after that, they are doing the work of a prophet. They are the workers of the prophet. They are the uh, followers of the prophet. They are the ambassadors of those prophets, right? They can be the disciples of those prophets, but they are not prophets themselves. So, so what we are ending just with the historical thing now, and we're going to go to something else now. From the historical perspective and from the theological perspective, historically how it started with, uh, with scientific, uh, you know, uh, methods of hypnotism and magnetism. This is science. You know, magnetism is such an uh, advanced technology and has healing and, and so many things that, uh, I mean, I went recently for a minor operation, uh, but a very delicate one. And for them to know what to do, the, 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 the doctors sent me for an MRI scan. Now, an MRI scan is based on magnetism. Magnetism is used, the principles of magnetism, to do the MRI scan, you know. And, uh, and it's remarkable when you, after you come out from that MRI scanning machine, 
which is pounding you with all those magnetic fields for over almost half an hour. And then it, then it, it can detect every segment of whichever area. In my case, you know, uh, to look at the brain centers and what have you. And, and uh, uh, because there was a small clot uh, that they were trying to identify. And it tells you exactly the detail, you know, and where it came from and where it reached and where it is located. Now, this is remarkable. So we have, we, they, you know, we have no problem in, in, in science and medicine and magnetism and hypnotism and healing and faith healing even. There's no problem with all that. Where does the problem come in? The problem comes in when it's commercialized. The problem comes in when uh, you are uh, uh, demanding money for it and you are also setting things up. It's not genuine anymore. It's staged, like the last resurrection story. You know, that, that now the pastor says he, he agrees that it was staged, right? And so, so now, I mean, how, how are you going to account for that now? You know, that's what we're talking about. So having said that, having said that, they are the good healers, but they are also the fake healers. They are the faith healers, and they don't advertise because they're not collecting money. They're not doing it for the money. But uh, you find, why are people still flocking to these faith healers' assemblies? That's the question I'm asking. And we'll stay tuned. We'll be back after the break to answer that question. <laughs> Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now we are in the last segment of this uh, episode. And remember, it's going to be on uh, you know, fake healers or faith healers. And we're going to be a two or three part series. Uh, but in this uh, series, in this segment, before we end, we'll give you our contact details. So keep your pens ready before we end. So you could communicate with us and uh, share your ideas with us, agree with us, disagree with us. Uh, so we will welcome that as you always do. So before we went for the break, I, we asked the question, why do people still go? Knowing that this is happening, I'm sure where that resurrection took place, you'll find people will still go there after a while or they'll go to another faith healing tent. They say, okay, this pastor was not the right guy. The other guy is the right guy. Why are people still going? So let's look at this slide because there is a need for faith healing. There is a need for faith healing. When people are faced with a serious or debilitating illness, they often consider supernatural healings of faith, healing as the final option. Our expectations for divine healing are often placed in a variety of sources which present themselves as the only hope for a miraculous recovery. Does that sound familiar? You know people like that? Maybe you were like that at one point, that everything is going fine, but your doctor tells you, you've got cancer. You've got six months to live. Now the, the alarm bells are ringing. I've got only six months to live. Oh, now there's no cure for me. What, what am I going to do? The doctor said six months. Only thing that can help me is a miracle. Only thing that's going to help me is a faith healer. I heard of a faith healer there. You know, I must go to one of God's chosen faith healers. And, and then you see how, how a person who, uh, who is not strong themselves in faith will start to react this way. A person who's strong in faith, and when the doctor tells him, you've got six months to lose, they say, well, doctor, sorry, that prescription you do not not in control of. The one who brought me in this world knows when I'm exiting. You don't. Your job is to just make me, you know, comfortable, right? Uh, and so if that person with the, who has the right thinking. But most of us immediately we react, oh, oh, I got high blood pressure now. Oh, I got sugar. Uh, maybe my neighbor put tagati for me. Maybe somebody put jadu or put some medicines on me. Now that's why I'm, I'm not going to get cured. And you now all this, and that comes from our own mind, our own weak mind and weak faith. And you know, I, I always used to sit and think, and this is always an anomaly. These people who call themselves faith healers, Look at how, look at the paradox of this thing. It is generally the people of weak faith who goes to the faith healers. So the faith healers are looking to guys with the weak faith. Do you see, the, do you see already how it's building up this whole story? Because the person with strong faith is not going to go and get, gonna throw his money away on some other person who somebody feels is doing something marvelous. 
if somebody has got a miracle cure, they're not going to ask for fee and put money down first, you know. So, so this, is, this is a very, uh, you know, why it becomes a very delicate, because it's an emotional issue too. And people are praying on people of weak faith. Let's read it further, the next slide. You know, people, uh, you, you know what you say when they're debilitating. Let's see, it goes further. Some individuals will pursue the avenue of faith healers or those professing to have an ability to heal. Objects such as handkerchiefs, religious icons, pilgrimages to holy sites are said to offer hope to those in desperate circumstances. I heard of people say, well, you know, if you want to be cured of this, yeah, you must get me five cows. You know what I mean? And all this, and, and you have to bring me 20,000 rand in cash and this and that. Now this poor person is desperate. At the moment, they are in an emotional, uh, uh, weak, emotionally weak. And, and they have the money. And you know, the poor man, he's not, he hasn't got money, he's not going to get money. You only get money out of rich people, you know. But the, the, the sad thing is those ordinary working class people who give the last dime and the last cent for these kind of things. So I, I think the, what we are saying here again, that the, there is a need for faith healing, but the people are going and looking at places and these fake healers now, the fake healers are preying on these people with weak faith uh, and, and taking money and, and promising healing and, and medical cures. Now, I, I'm not just saying this on my own, that this point here, this, this is an established uh, fact that it is happening. You will agree with me. But I'm going to give you a Bible quote from the book of Jeremiah in chapter 15, verse 18. This is in the Bible, right? Why is my pain unending? And why my wound grievous and incurable? Will you be to me like a liar? Like a spring that fails. Now, this is the prophet Jeremiah, you know, in, in, in speaking. Now, as Muslims, we don't believe a, a prophet will say such a thing, right? You know, will you, he's talking to God, will, oh God, will you be to me like a liar, like a spring that fails? Why is my pain unending? And why my wound grievous and incurable? You remember the prophet Job, peace be upon him? Is in the Bible, it's in the Quran, how he was with what kind of leprosies and illnesses, his family left him. God puts us through tests. It is a test from us. Job, the prophet Job, peace be upon him, never gave up. He never started lamenting, you know, uh, 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 and crying. Let's see what the Quran says. Let us see what the Quran says about uh, when, when you are in problems and difficulty. In chapter 2, verse 153 to 157 of the Quran. The Quran says concerning this, O oh, you who believe, seek help with patience, with patient perseverance and prayer. Seek help in patient perseverance and prayer. That's how you look for help. When you are in problem, be patient, rely on God, and pray to God. For Allah is with those who patiently persevere. For God is with those who patiently persevere. God is with those. Remember Job, peace be upon him, we spoke about him just now. You'll find in the traditions that one of the reasons when people asked him, why did you, why were you still so, uh, you never complained in all those illnesses and problems God gave you, you never uttered one complaint against God. He says, because that is the time I knew God is the closest to me. He was testing me. So, so this is what the Quran says, seek help. Instead, first, you know, seek help in, in patience and in prayer. You pray to God. You know, it doesn't cost money to pray to God. You know, if God only had to charge us for his prayers, nobody would afford it, right? So, but he's open to all. We are all God's creation. God doesn't have any favorites. In, I'm talking about in terms of color and money and what have you. He has his favorites in terms of those who are close to him spiritually. He favors them because they are closer to him spiritually, because of their spiritual uh, closeness and good acts, the spirituality, you know, uh, uh, of recognizing him. And then chapter one, uh, 50, 154 says, And say not of those who are slain in the word of God that they are dead, they are living, though you perceive not. And then 155, look at chapter 2, verse 155. It, it applies to this whole thing we're talking about, where people resort to fake healers, faith healers, and all this, because in desperation, in problems. And it says, be sure we will test you with something of fear and hunger and some loss in goods and of lives and of the fruits of your toil. I will test you with all these things, right? With your wealth, with hunger, with your property, 
with the fruits of your toil, all your, your, your years uh, of thriving, but give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, who say when afflicted with the calamity, to Allah we belong and to him is our return. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim. They are the ones on whom will descend blessings from God Almighty and mercy. And they are the ones that will receive guidance. Look how beautifully the Quran, God Almighty describes, don't take an illness as a, as a punishment, as somebody did something and all that and all bad. Negative. See, it's all to do with, we didn't we say at the beginning, it's mind over matter. If you think it's bad, it's going to be bad. You're going to make it bad. You understand? So, so here, I think, uh, but the, you know, the end of the day, it depends the person. You see, if the person is strong mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, they won't fall victim to these things. But even the Bible, let's, let's be fair and give the other verse about, I'm giving you both sides. We talked, you know, we spoke from Jeremiah on the weak ones. He was speaking about people of weak faith, the complaint to, oh, why me? Oh, God, why did you choose? Why are you giving me all these problems, right? Why, why me? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, it states that, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. See how beautiful? It's a similar thing. It's your attitude. Which attitude? Because God, when God, there's the, the, there's the traditions of the prophet, peace be upon him, which says exactly this, that God does not give you a test. God does not give you an illness. Outwardly, you are suffering, but inwardly, he's purifying you and he's, and he's preparing you for, for greater things and greater rewards in this world and in the, the real eternal world that is to come. He doesn't give you anything, but he gives in return, rewards you with something more. So I think what we are saying, you know, if we look at all this, what we are talking about, there's another beautiful verse in the Quran in chapter 2, verse 286 says, and on no soul does God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, place a burden greater than it can bear. It gets every good that it earns and it suffers every ill that it earns. So on no soul does God place a burden, Allah, greater than it can bear. So you can see from these verses, the, Islam has an attitude that don't, don't let people con you. Don't rely on this and that. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, we, we must take things into our hands. We must rely on God Almighty Allah Subhanahu Yes, we can go to doctors. Yes, we can go to the true spiritual healers who are not publicizing and are taking the public for a ride and asking for money. They are the silent ones. You will know where they are by word of mouth. But don't fall into this. Uh, I call it a, 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 they catch you in an emotional, at the time when you're emotionally the weakest, you know, with, with all your problems and, and they play on that emotion. Uh, because we're almost at an end, I promise you the new time slots, Monday nights, uh, building bridges, 8.30 to 9.30. I'll give our details just now of contact. Wednesday mornings, 9 a.m. it is repeated, and Friday evenings at 11 p.m. So these are the slots that times haven't changed. Here's our contact details, 031-507-5080. You can uh, watch us up with a WhatsApp message, SMS 0745601786. 0745601786 email on info at ifri.com we also have a box number box 6036 phoenix but if you want many people ask is it to where you had the past building bridges programs you go onto the itv networks it's called www.itvnetworks.tv the website www.itvnetworks.tv then you click onto featured shows and then you go to click onto spiritual shows and you'll see building bridges but go on to the other shows. There are many other programs there. Uh, or you can go on to YouTube. If you want to watch many of, uh, thanks to the ITV tech, uh, IT people, they have got uh, many of the Building Bridges episodes on YouTube. So you just type the name Rafik Hassan and you will get them on YouTube. So uh, maybe next time we'll do with some of your questions and answers. But uh, for now, you know, we thank you uh, for, uh, you know, viewing. Please send us your comments. Uh, and until we meet again, uh, we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh na tera khuda koi aur hai na mera khuda koi aur hai na tera khuda koi aur hai na mera khuda koi aur hai 
ये जो रास्ते हैं जुदा जुदा ये मामला कोई और है 